Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk about my most anticipated new book releases that are all due to come out in July, August, and September 2022. I always love making these most anticipated releases videos. I think they're so much fun. I love talking about new books coming out. But I have to say, I am particularly excited to talk about this quarter because not only does it contain the month of September, which is normally a very big month in publishing, kind of kicks off the big publishing season ahead of holiday season at the end of the year, but also my two most anticipated books of this entire year both come out in August. So very excited to talk about those two, excited about all of these books. No time to lose. Let's get started. We will, of course, start with the first month in the quarter, which in this case is July. There are two books coming out on July 5th that I wanted to mention in this video. The first is a novel called Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. This book is about a magician who, true to form, does a disappearing act, except she actually disappears and she's never heard from again. Again. So the rest of this book follows her sister going on a journey to figure out what happened to her. I read this author's last book, which was called Una Out of Order. I actually reviewed that one for Open Letters Review. I'll link that down below if you want to hear more about that book, if you want to have an idea of what to expect with this new one. I was very impressed with it. And so I do have some high hopes for this sophomore effort. But the other July 5th release on my radar is a nonfiction book called Growing Up Getting the Story of America's Most Unconventional Dynasty by James Reginato. This book is about the impressive progeny of oil tycoon J. Paul Getty, which includes the co-founder of Getty Images, an award-winning environmentalist, August Getty, the fashion designer, Nats Getty, the spouse of YouTube celebrity Gigi Gorgeous. They are, suffice it to say, a very eclectic, very dynamic bunch. And this book is about the group of them. Moving along to the next week in July, I have a pair of books coming out on July 12th to discuss. There's a novel called Groupies by Sarah Priscus that I am definitely intrigued by. This book is about a young woman in the 1970s who begins following and photographing a band in Los Angeles. This being a novel about music set in the 1970s, it is, of course, already being compared to Daisy Jones and the Six and Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau, which I read and reviewed here on my channel last year. It was one of my favorites of the entire year. But I'm always very wary of those types of comparisons because they're coming from the publisher and they're trying to sell you the book rather than set you up for the right type of experience. I've been burned many times with those types of comparisons. So I'm going to go into groupies expecting it to be entirely its own thing, but I'm also going in expecting to really enjoy it because for whatever reason, over the past couple of years, books set in the 1970s have just really been doing it for me. But then also coming out on July 12th is a memoir that I am really excited about about. It's called Soundings, Journeys in the Company of Whales by Doreen Cunningham. And in this book, the author discusses a trip she took with her very young son following the gray whale migration up the west coast of the United States. But then also in this book, she discusses her time living in Alaska, where she was learning about the relationship that indigenous peoples have with these whales. Books like this one that blend nature writing and memoir are normally a slam dunk for me. There are very few exceptions to that rule. I normally love books that blend those two genres. And I'm hearing amazing things about this book already. And so I don't want to jinx myself, but I am getting the feeling that this might be a five-star read for me. Believe it or not, that's actually it for July. Things tend to be a little bit quiet in the publishing world in the early to mid-summer, but August is when things really start to heat up, particularly August 2nd. It seems like that's going to be a huge release date. I have four new releases coming out on that day to talk about in this video, starting with Platypus Matters, the extraordinary story of Australian mammals by Jack Ashby. The author of this book is a naturalist, and in this book he discusses the unusual and highly charismatic animals of Australia, or the mammals anyway, you know, the ones that aren't trying to kill you. 
I am an animal lover, so it is no surprise that this book made its way onto my TBR. The second August 2nd release that I wanted to tell you about is another nonfiction book. It's called Dangerous Rhythms, Jazz and the Underworld by TJ English. And this book is about the interconnected worlds of jazz and organized crime in 20th century America. This author is a journalist and his topic of interest seems to be organized crime. He has released a number of different books on the topic. And all of those books seem to have been fairly well received. So I'm excited about this because it seems like it has a high likelihood of being well done. But also, I'm very excited about this book because I am positively obsessed with jazz music. Now, remember how I said at the start of this video that my two most anticipated releases of this entire year both come out in August? It's actually weirder than that because both of them come out on the same day. They both come out on August 2nd. So they are the remaining two books in this quartet. I don't know how it worked out that way, but it did. But since I loved his last book, The Feather Thief, so much, it actually inspired a whole recommendations video here on this channel. I have been more than ready for Kirk Wallace Johnson's next book, especially because I got to hear him talk about it during a virtual author event I attended last year. It sounded amazing, and I've been looking forward to it ever since, and it comes out on August 2nd. It is called The Fisherman and the Dragon, A Fight for Justice on the Texas Gulf Coast. This is a history of a conflict that happened in the 1970s on the Texas Gulf Coast between fishermen and refugees from from Vietnam. Fishing was really bad at that time for a variety of reasons. But instead of looking toward the real causes, instead of trying to find the real culprit or culprits, the Vietnamese community became the scapegoat. And although things got really bad, to say the least. This isn't a story we know very well today. I had never heard of this before I heard the author talk about it during that author event. So he did a ton of research, just like he did for The Feather Thief. I think I read that he accessed a lot of previously untouched material. This is such an important story, and I know this author is going to do a tremendous job telling it. And then the final August 2nd release that I'm going to be talking about in this video is a novel that I don't think I could be more excited about. It's Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. This is by the author of A Constellation of Vital Phenomena, also the author of the Czar of Love and Techno, which just so happens to be one of my favorite works of fiction of all time. I fell in love with it immediately after I read it, and I actually reviewed it here on my channel when I was just a baby booktuber. The main character of this new novel works at a movie studio in 1940s Los Angeles, and she has to confront her father's arrest in Italy 15 years prior to the events of this novel, while she's also dealing with the very complicated social and political scenes in Los Angeles as the world descends into war. Not long after the Czar of Love and Techno came out, and I read it for the first time and fell in love with it, I read it very close to its release date. I remember reading this news article saying that Anthony Marr had been awarded a fellowship that would more or less financially support him while he worked on his next novel. And ever since then, I've just been waiting, <laughs> just like foaming at the mouth, ready for news about his new novel. And here it is. Finally, I've been waiting for this book since 2015. And because I know that he had the time and the resources to just focus on this novel and to really perfect it, I hate to say it, I am basically expecting a work of genius. No pressure. I know that by having those types of expectations, I'm essentially putting my heart onto railroad tracks. Like I'm setting myself up to be crushed if this book does not live up to my expectations. But in this case, in only this case, I am okay with taking that risk because it is not every day that I anticipate a novel like this. It is not every day that I wait for a book since 2015 that one of my favorite authors is coming out with a new book. I am okay with pouring all of my hopes and dreams into this new release. So suffice it to say, this is my most anticipated new release of the year. Hard to follow up on a book like that, but there are some other August releases that I wanted to talk about. So let's move on to those. There is only one new release of Note coming out on August 16th that I saw anyway. 
It's a book called Sinkable, Obsession, the Deep Sea, and the Shipwreck of the Titanic by Daniel Stone. As the subtitle says, this is, of course, a book about the Titanic. But instead of focusing on the aspects of the story of the Titanic that most of us know already, this author instead chooses to focus on the Titanic as a shipwreck. And he discusses why, out of all the boats that have made their way to the bottom of the ocean, this one in particular fascinates us so much. For whatever reason, I've been watching a ton of Titanic content here on YouTube lately, so that's why this one piqued my interest. Now, I've already spoken about my most anticipated novel of this year, but there's a book coming out on the 30th of August that I expect will be some other people's most anticipated novel of the year, and I'm actually interested in this book as well. It is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is the new novel from the force that is Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's the author of Daisy Jones and the Six, Malibu Rising, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, probably one of the only universally beloved books here on Booktube. You may have heard of some of these novels. She has been very big in recent years. And this new book, I believe, is set in the same universe as all those other ones. At least that's what she implied at the author event of hers I went to back in November. This book is about a former tennis star attempting to come out of retirement in the glorious decade that was the 19th. 1990s. I am very excited about this one for a number of reasons, and pretty high up on that list is the fact that this is basically a sports book. And as a sports book reviewer and someone who has been trying to get people to read more about sports because they're fun to read about, I feel that this will help my cause. But now let's move into the last month of this quarter, September. Historically, the loftiest of all months in the publishing world's really big titles tend to come out in September ahead of the holidays. And it's looking like this year will be no exception to that rule. There are some very good looking books coming out in the ninth month of the year. So on the 6th of September, there are two books coming out that I wanted to very briefly mention. The first one is called Agatha Christie, An Elusive Woman by Lucy Worsley, which is, of course, a new biography coming out about the mystery writer. And it was written by the author of Jane Austen at Home. And the other other September 6th book is called Wild Ride, a memoir of IV drips and rocket ships by Haley Arsenault. This is the memoir of the youngest ever American to orbit the Earth. Both of these books sound absolutely incredible. These are both definitely contenders for nonfiction November. But here come the big name authors, because on September 13th, Ian McEwen, very famously the author of Atonement, as well as a number of other novels, he has a new one coming out, and it's called Lessons. This one looks like it's going to be a sprawler. It starts during the Cold War when we meet our main character as a young, talented piano player living in a boarding school. And then we fast forward 25 years, and we see him as a grown man, but one whose wife has just left him, and she's left him with their baby son. The blurb of this book also mentions a number of different historical events, so I'm sure we're going to see how his life is affected by those historical happenings. And I also think that's going to play into a larger discussion about how such events affect our lives. This new one sounds really good, but to be honest, I have no idea how I'm going to feel about it. I've read a number of Ian McEwan's books in the past, some of which I have really enjoyed. There's one book in his backlist that actually got me back into reading for pleasure. But his newest books, there's no way to really sugarcoat this. They've just sounded really weird to me. They've sounded really uninspiring. And I really didn't like his insistence that his book Machines Like Me wasn't science fiction when it clearly was, like I have two eyes, that actually got me upset enough that I wrote a whole piece about genre that I disguised as a review of the song Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. Wrote that for Open Letters Review. If you would like to read it, I'll link it for you in the description box below. But I just really didn't like that. So his work lately has seemed like it's just not for me. But this newest one, I have hope for this one because it's more historical. It seems like it might be more like Atonement, which I do believe is his masterpiece. So I'm going to give it a try. 
and we'll see how I like it. But there's another big one that comes out in September, and this one comes out on the 20th. It's called Less is Lost by Andrew Sean Greer. This is the follow-up to his Pulitzer Prize winning novel that was simply titled Less. And in this new book, Arthur Less is once again running away from his problems. But this time, instead of going internationally, he is trekking across the United States. I know that Less, both as a novel and as a Pulitzer Prize winning novel was a little bit divisive, a little bit controversial. I know that some people really liked it, thought it deserved to win, and other people definitely didn't. I was part of the group who really enjoyed the novel. I have no opinion on whether or not it should have won. I'm not qualified to make those decisions because I don't read that much fiction. But I really did like Less, and I'm looking forward to reading its sequel. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but it seems like there are so many high profile literary novels of previous years that are getting sequels in 2022. Seems to be a low key theme of the year. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. Then there's one more new release that I would like to highlight in this video. It also comes out on September 20th and it has a super cool cover. It's called This Is What It Sounds Like, What the Music You Love Says About You by Susan Rogers and Augie Augus. This book is about a couple of different things. It's about the neuroscience behind why specific types of music speak to us in the way that they do. But this is also the story of one of the co-authors. This book tells the story of how Susan Rogers went from being a mere audio tech to being the chief engineer on Prince's album Purple Rain, and then, you know, went on to become one of the most successful female music producers of all time. This sounds absolutely amazing. So those are the 15 books that I am most anticipating in the third quarter of 2022. If any of these interested you, or if there are any new releases that are coming out in July, August, and September that I didn't mention in this video, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. All of the books that I did mention in today's video, as well as any other links that I promised you, will be in the description box below for your clicking convenience. And there will also be links in that description box to the videos I did for the previous quarters in case you miss those or in case you would like to revisit them now that all of those books should be out there in the world ready for you to read. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you will find links to everywhere you can find me around the internets, including Goodreads and Instagram, the two places where I'm the most active, in case you want to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.